Hello and welcome to the Hypno Travelers on the Magical Psyche Highway Podcast. That's right. Your host and tour guide is Scott Prevet, a healer, hypnotist, and a magician. And your bus driver, Jason Gobelli, also a hypnotist, an entrepreneur, and a spiritual guide. Disclaimer, neither Jason, Scott, or any of our guests here today are licensed professional psychologists or psychiatrists. So please don't make any changes to any medication or treatments that you are currently on based on the conversation that you hear here today. Just hop on the bus and enjoy the ride. Trip with us on the Inner Revelation bus. That's right. Hi, I'm Jason, and welcome back to the Hypno Travelers on the Magical Psyche Highway. We're so glad you're here, and we are really excited today, aren't we, Scott? Heck yeah, we are stoked for today's guest. Oh yeah, so this is wonderful. Today we have the great Dr. Marina Costina. Marina, how are you? I am wonderful. I love your energy. <laughs> oh yeah, we love your energy too. So we're ready to get this going. So let's get started right away with who are you and what do you do? Oh my goodness, that's such a difficult question to answer. Uh, I am uh, a clinical hypnotherapist that specializes in uh, trauma and addictions, uh, but I'm also part-time sorceress and uh, a dancer and a Zumba instructor and all of those wonderful things. <laughs> well, you have a lot going on. We also know that you're an author. Yeah, <laughs> yes, I am. Absolutely. I have several books, and, and um, I actually had uh, a chance to present one of them at a TEDx, so I'm also a speaker. Um, yes. Wonderful. So you spoke at the TEDx stage with one of your books. What was that like? Uh, it was a lot of fun, uh, and uh, my topic was on a had difficult topic for TEDx and I'm, you know I was really amazed that now uh, society is moving towards this whole magical stuff that is science we know right but uh, it was accepted which I was very amazed because it was about bioenergy and uh, you know that is kind of a topic that is not yet discussed in mainstream science uh, but I was very uh, excited to do that wow so that's great so tell us about this bioscience what's that like well i really love bioenergy studying bioenergy i studied with the um, world-renowned scientists that invent uh, equipment to measure human aura or biofield scientifically and this is a legit science because you know it's been like i said uh, created by physicists and uh it shows that we are not just this uh, meat suit, you know, that we're much more than that and that our energy can really tell a lot of things. And I actually, um, you know, besides being a hypnotherapist, I also uh, work a lot with energies and I call myself energy architect because I don't believe in the word healer. I don't believe that we heal anybody, but uh, we allow others to heal uh, and help them. So in the bio field you can see a lot of things um sicknesses some emotional blocks so it goes very hand in ha uh, hand with uh, hypnosis because again in hypnosis we also work with subconscious mind that is kind of not seen not uh, people are not aware of it so i like all of this mysterious stuff where the real juices where the real secrets of us are Nice. So, so you read ours as well. Then I take it read energy that are admitted from people. Yes, I do. I do it intuitively, but I also have really state of the art equipment like BioWell developed by Dr. Karatkov. So I and Aura Photos, and it's it's a really nice conversation for people to see tangibly uh, that they are more than this just uh, you know conscious mind that an ego that we usually associate ourselves with and that unfortunately yet our western society is really pushing us to believe that's what we are you know absolutely so let me ask you this now do your intuitions get confirmed by the equipment 
Absolutely. It's it's very amazing. And, you know, I have uh, this traditional equipment. Uh, so usually when people come, I already can tell. So I tell them uh, what's going on. And uh, then uh, we might jump on that equipment. Or I even have this called drowsing rods that people use for finding water. Uh, you probably saw yeah. them. And they move. And it's amazing how it never, ever, like, you know, the equipment, the scientific equipment and those drowsing rods, they always go hand in hand. And it just, for me, it's always fascinating because, you know, I don't do it. It's through me. So it never fails. But it's kind of cool to see the tangible proof for that. That's awesome. So really, why spend the money on the equipment when you can just do it yourself? Uh, That's true. I mean, and I teach my clients how to do that. Equipment, of course, gives you more parameters. Like it's so sophisticated now that a lot of uh, peer uh, reviewed articles have been written using this equipment because it gives you, like, in numbers, uh, for example, energy's, uh, energy uh, running through every organ in your body. So you can prevent uh, diseases before they happen on the physical uh, level. Well, that's awesome. So do you find yourself just reading people when you meet them? No, I actually uh, feel like it's, first of all, it's exhausting. Uh, And secondly, I feel like it's intrusive. So I always ask permission because I also believe in not interfering uh, with my unsolicited advices. (laughs) You know, I got you. So it's not something that you just see. No, I, I need to tune in. I mean, I need to set myself to that and I when I interact like with you for example or I go somewhere I don't read people I just you know I just let it happen right but if I decide to of course I can see their energy and uh, their blocks I also do a lot of somatic work so you know body language and uh, uh, the way people walk and tell a lot about a person but in my regular life I like to be a regular person. <laughs> I get it. But, but Marina, sometimes I think you can't help that intuition because when we first came on, you even said, hey, I noticed your energy. <laughs> yes, absolutely. No, no, no. Of course, like on that general level, I always listen to whether I, you know how, this is a good test for anybody who's listening. The easiest test is stand by the person, and are you leaning towards the person or are you leaning against, you know, just let your body show you. And we usually wear like pendulums, you know, our bodies are. And usually people that we really that are kind of on the same vibration, we kind of tend to uh, accept and uh, feel good with and lean towards to. And those who we need to protect ourselves from, we always have that feeling in, in our stomach. You don't need to be an intuitive healer to do that we just often are not taught that and we don't listen to it but i think all of us have it the instinct great now speaking about being in tune with your bodies and we are down your magical psyche highway (laughs) talking about 52 pieces oh my goodness yes my body really showed me you know i kind of had a interesting um uh, experience. So two and a half years ago, almost two and a half already, yes, I had a near death skydiving accident. Um, I went with a friend and I was jumping and um, everything opened, but then there was this uh, uh, gust of wind um, that just, you know, messed our jump. And I felt I, I lost consciousness somehow, even uh just as soon as i jumped out of the plane and i kind of cleared the whole field with my face um i was broken into 52 pieces i had no face uh the the doctors believed that i wouldn't uh because i also broke two vertebrae hip um arm like a bunch of things right uh so 42 pieces were on my face and 10 were on my body uh, the doctors told me that i was not gonna probably walk on my own and for me it was uh, crazy because you know i'm a very active person i'm a dancer like i said i'm a yoga and zumba instructor so 
but and and I there was time there was like probably two weeks when I was uh, pretty much laying without movement but you know I'm stubborn so um with a lot of practice and in three months I was already teaching yoga and zumba again um so my body is completely recuperated but i'm still working on my face they've done an amazing job thank god it happened at this time when the medicine is so advanced so i am about to go through 19th surgery in two weeks and i really really hope this is the last one um so yeah uh it's been interesting because my body you know me who is always active and very healthy i experienced all conditions you can possibly experience i experienced blindness death i was mute for a long time um like i said almost paralyzed uh bald i lost tons of hair uh with my beautiful always long hair it was really, really sad and difficult uh psychologically i went through everything you can possibly imagine claustrophobia when you're claustrophobic not only in the place but within your body because i had neck brace uh, my teeth were all wired my um you know arm i could move it, it was horrifying panic attacks, uh, suicidal thoughts, depression, I mean, you name it. And I believe that I needed to go through this so I could be a better help to my clients because I have so much empathy now and I can actually feel people's pain and difficulty. And I believe that it's also the second reason why it was given to me because the modalities that I've been using before the accident, I actually used for myself. And I think that hypnosis helped me mentally and energy work helped me physically to just bounce back. I mean, imagine 19 surgeries in two less than two and a half years. That's a lot of surgeries, right? Yes. And, uh, and bouncing back physically and emotionally and staying semi semi normal, semi not uh, crazy through this process. I think hypnosis and energy work is just. I I have no doubt anymore that this is the the future of medicine and of self help. And Scott and I are thinking that we were talking about it, and we're thinking that it's also magical because. One of the things you use often in magic is a deck of cards. And there happened to be 52 cards in a deck and you were broken into 52 pieces. And it's like your deck was scattered all over the place and you're magically putting it all back together. You know, it's amazing because I actually wrote the book called 52 Pieces and I have an accompanied 52 uh, card deck that goes with them. That is a magical deck. It's called 52 Pieces of Light. Uh, and it's uh, you can use it as a psychology card because it helps you find the negative state and bring yourself into the empowerment, you know, empowering state. It, it can be used as a meditation uh, and also as a magical tool because it's based on Russian runes. So I was drawing those runes on top of my body as I was healing, uh, you know, because uh, they have vibrational codes in that. And uh, it actually helps with your vibration. So you guys are amazing for picking that. And yes, I I believe that all things that's been happening are super magical. That's right. Okay, so now let's go here. We've talked a lot about that, but in your life, down your highway, what was that one moment, that aha moment that was like, oh, my God, I'm going to be able to help people and change lives. What was that like? And when did that come about? Oh, interesting. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, I thought that was my big story. You know how we all have this big transformational story. So that was my big transformational story. And then I had this accident. Uh -huh. But um, 11, well, to be honest with you, I when I was a little girl, I always had that very strong intuition. 
And I always could predict kind of um, death in our family, right? So I would uh, see snakes in my dream and definitely somebody would die. And we had a big family, uh, you know, you know, growing up in Russia, like all aunts and uncles were all very close. So a lot of people died when I was a little girl. And it was not a pleasant gift. So I kind of blocked it. And plus, you know, I grew up in a family of academics and like medical professionals. So that was just, you know, cute, uh, but not supported much, right? So I blocked it. But all my life, I was kind of doing it under the table, right? You know, always stealing, the, doing cards and all of that. And 11 years ago, I had a... Uh, really uh painful divorce okay and um everything crushed at the same time i lost uh, my job uh in that divorce i lost uh, my home i pretty much was homeless um i didn't know how to pay for anything because i lost a job suddenly two friends that i could could have stayed with in chicago and um, moved away so it was like really god <laughs> everything at the same time so i found myself sleeping on the yoga mat in the yoga studio where i taught and showering at the gym where i still had membership and uh, working well working trying to find a job because i lost a job um at a local whole foods because they had free wi-fi and <laughs> one night i was late and uh, watching my movies, uh, Russian movies on YouTube. And you know how YouTube gives you recommendations about the videos, right? Yeah. So it gave me a video on uh, Aura Machine. And it was uh, by Russian scientists. And it was like 2 o'clock in the morning. So I called them because it was uh, like 11 o'clock in the morning there. They picked up, which is weird. Uh, we talked. Uh, I really love that. I never do anything like that, but I felt like I needed to do it. I put it on a credit card because I had no money. It was a lot of money, like three thousand five hundred something dollars, and it came to me in four days from Russia. Like seriously, eleven years ago. You know? And when I got it, I started doing aura photography, and it just took off so fast and all doors started opening and you know I was in academia before and then I worked in corporate world and that's the job I lost and I was so upset and suddenly I got into this world of magic magic that was so natural to me but now I actually was starting making it as a profession and I just got up from that floor and I said pardon my friends screw everything that was limiting me i'm gonna do this and the second i claimed it i mean i started getting one modality after another people started coming i mean kanye west found me on his own <laughs> you know i never uh, ran after any celebrity it, it just it just everything is a flow and it felt like there was no effort even though i study and learn all the time but it doesn't feel like that Nice. So along these ways and, and going through all this different path, who are your mentors? Who are those people that you learned from and those and those mentors of yours? You know, it's amazing. I have so many because I love learning. And right now I'm taking this time out, uh, like I call it, uh, to learn even more. But um, in hypnosis, I uh, started with, yes, I had the... Mm, uh, the uh, Guild of Hypno Hypnotherapists, but that was very, like, you know, it was an online program, I, and then I felt like I needed human human touch, right, and so I worked with Ines Simpson, she was my first uh, hypnosis teacher, I got Simpson protocol from her uh, all levels, and now I actually teach it to others, so I'm one of her, uh, you know, uh, people that how do you call it? I don't know. Uh, people who were who teaches her protocol. Um, Freddie Jacqueline, of course, that became not only a mentor and a teacher, but a dear friend. Uh, we did retreats with him. We do a lot of presentations, and we, this is a person whom I 
uh, wrote when I was laying in bed, uh, not talking, not being able to move, and I just wrote to him, I need help. And he called me, and I just listened to his hypnosis, and he took away um, my claustrophobia, like, in one session, and panic attacks. It was magical. Um, Mike Mandel is another user that I just love with all my heart. Um, he, I, I went through his academy, but it's also a person who's very approachable, and we've maintained uh, friendship, and I just always humbly learning from him all of the modalities that he, you know, offers. So, uh, these are my, uh, the, in Russia, I, it was an interesting story in Russia, I wanted to learn, it's called Davzenka method for alcohol dependency, but it's kind of like a closed club. Nobody ever offers lessons on that. And if you're not a direct student of Davzenka who already passed away, there's no way for you to learn that. So I found his best student, who is now a therapist, and many years ago. And I went to him as if I have a problem. And when I came there, I told him, this is my life purpose. I need to learn this. And I'm not going anywhere until you teach me. And so he taught me, <laughs> and I'm one of those <laughs> few people that has this different method for alcohol dependency that I use. So those are my hypnosis teachers. And then I have a lot of um, energy healing practitioners. I spent time in Altai in Siberia and Russia studying with uh, shamans. And um, unfortunately, this teacher just passed away. Um, and then I was in Bali and Mexico and Peru. So, you know, learning here and there from all of the great minds. Um, yes, I am very blessed with my teachers indeed. Wonderful. Wonderful. Now, Scott, Scott, it's your turn, brother. <laughs> oh, wow. Marina, you've done so much. You've done TED Talks. You've written books. You've gone on many journeys so let's say 10 years from now you look back what do you hope that you've done besides all this uh -huh. you know this is an interesting question i know you're supposed to like have a business plan or even a vision i especially after my accident but even before that i always lived in the present moment i have no idea where my journey is going to take me next day and i know it might sound not very professional or business-like but this is the way that it's been working for me. I honestly just hope that, especially after this horrific um, journey that I'm on right now, I realized how lonely and dark it is. And I have no idea how people that don't have spiritual connection, that don't have tools like me, that don't have all of these colleagues that, you know, offer me lots of sessions. I have no idea how you do it as a, like I call them, 3D person that believes that your ego, your body, and whatever society tells you, the limitations, uh, that how do you something like this? So my goal, I don't care, honestly, at this point. Yes, it's nice to have a TED Talk and all of these publications and whatever. But I think that the true legacy that you leave is the uh, how many how to change people's lives, right? And I hope that all of this work is going to bring um, some tools to people and meet people at different levels of their um, conscious journey, magical journey, um, so they don't feel so alone and so they don't feel like they are stuck in this limited body and limited life. Um, and that is my goal. So I don't know how it's going to look, honestly, <laughs> because as you see, I'm all over the place. <gasps> so maybe it will be another book. Maybe this this book that's been doing very well um, is going to be that stepping stone for somebody. Maybe it's my modalities and my new frameworks I'm creating. I have no idea how, and I leave it up to the divine to guide me. But that is my main mission now. Nice, awesome. nice, beautiful. Well, you got so much going on and so much to offer. How do our viewers get a hold of you? 
Well, thank you so much. I think the best way is just to go to my site because all information on social media and my I, I'm, I even allow people to text me at any time. I don't take too many phone calls because just, you know, it's energy, um, a lot of energy uh, there. But texting, people text me at any time. I want to be that safe place for them so they can find it. My email is there. So the uh, website is ravenouslifecenter.com. And I have a Ravenous for Life Center in Chicago, which is a a uh, cute little uh, wellness center, uh, as well as I do things online. So ravenouslifecenter.com. Spell that for us so that I can put it up on the screen for everyone. Uh, ravenous, uh, R-A-V-E-N-O-U-S, life, L-I-F-E, center, C-E-N-T-E-R.com. All one word. word. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, be sure to go to that website, guys. Scott, you have you want to say there, Marina? We just really want to thank you for spending time with us today and coming out and taking time in your schedule and and fitting us in. We really appreciate it. I think thank you so much for inviting me, and uh, I believe in magic, and I hope that our audience that listens can really start believing in magic because magic is real. And uh, when you believe in it, there are no limitations, really. And I'm a walking proof to that. That's absolutely Beautiful. right. Uh, Mar Mar Dr. Marina, do you have anything you want to share? Anything else? Uh, well, I just, uh, honestly, I just think that, um, again, like I, I, like I just said about the magic and about uh, seeing yourself beyond this physical body i think that is the biggest skill uh this is the, the biggest lesson that we can learn in school uh, from our parents and teach others because then um connecting with something higher than ourselves and just gui being guided in life that is the biggest um success that any of us can achieve because then there's always the right time the right place the right people and the right path. So connect with something beyond yourself, beyond this limitation. And again, be guided by your light, uh, by magic of this world. And whatever modalities help you do that, uh, all of them are going to bring you to the right place. So thank you. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's wonderful and wonderful and wonderful. And before we leave, I always have this the nugget. What's that one piece of wisdom besides the connection? Because we all know that that's one thing. But what's that one piece of wisdom that you want to give to everyone? One piece of wisdom. Okay. Um, I think that just understanding that you are powerful beyond belief. I never, you know, I always looked at myself as a very strong, independent woman. Uh, but now it's not just my big ego that I'm strong, that the qualities that I uh, associated myself with, it's this resilience within us that we uh, all possess and that I think that we shrink because of so many, um, uh, you know, like limitations that we see uh, from TV uh from our upbringing and it just i believe that knowing that there's so much more to you and that you can really survive and not only just survive but thrive through pretty much anything that life throws to you like you know they say you don't get more than you can handle i honestly believe in that now so whatever is going on in your life right now you got it Wow. Wonderful, wonderful words of wisdom. We certainly appreciate you. And it's been wonderful having you on here. We're so glad and, and grateful that you took the time out of your busy schedule to come share with us and allow us to go down your magical psyche highway. It's it's a pleasure to have you on here. Thank you so much. And happy vibes, happy lives. Happy vibes, happy life. Scott, you got anything you want to throw out here? Man, it's just been a great going down her magical psyche highway today. That's right. Well, 
Thanks, Marina. Thanks again for coming. And for our viewers, we're glad you're here. We hope you've enjoyed the show. If you like us, give us a thumbs up. If you think we're assholes, we don't care. Give us a thumbs down. Just share. Come back. Send your friends over. And we'll hope to see you next week. Thanks for coming. Wow. What a trip. Thanks for taking that journey with us today. Please like us, share us, and enlighten us with your views of the topics we drove into today. We appreciate you and love reading your comments. Thanks again, and we hope to see you back on the bus next week. That's right.